You have to train between the six rep range and the 12 rep range or you'll never build muscle. Uh, come on, okay, that's not the case at all. We know now that there's a lot more factors than just the repetition range that comes into play. But I do wanna do a little bit of a deep dive to get a further understanding of what that ideal repetition range truly is. The reality is we have so many different factors when it comes down to how we stress our muscles that it can't just be banked on a specific rep range. See, we have mechanical stress, metabolic stress, muscle damage stress, and all these different things that are looked at now at a cellular level. So in order to find where your perfect spot is for training, you have to do a little bit of due diligence on your own body, and I'll help you figure out how. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. A bunch of other videos peppered in throughout the week as well. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, then hit that little bell button so you can turn on notifications. I also encourage you to check out Thrive Market down in the description. This way you can get all your groceries in a one-stop shop online without ever having to go to the grocery store. So there's a special discount for all my fans and viewers of this video down in the link below if you wanna check it out. But for now, let's go ahead and get rolling right in to the content. All right, so when I said mechanical versus metabolic versus muscle damage stress, what I meant was metabolic being the damage that's actually occurring to the cell. Like when we work out, when we lift weights, we trigger metabolic damage. Like we're triggering a metabolic stress where the cells are having to adapt and get used to things. We're depriving them of oxygen because they're in a hypoxic state because we're straining. Like if we're straining our bicep really hard, we're actually constricting things and making it so it goes hypoxic. It doesn't get a lot of oxygen. That actually allows cells to get stronger because they adapt to less oxygen. They become more efficient and have more endurance. Then we have mechanical stress, which is just like it implies. We're under heavy load, so the muscle just gets adapted and gets stronger to heavy load. Then we have the muscle damage adaptation, which is actually the recovery, where we actually break down the little fibers of collagen that are in between the muscle cells and muscle uh, fibers themselves. Okay, that's a whole different story and really doesn't have a whole lot to do with our muscle growth, contrary to popular belief. So the first thing that I want to look at is a study that was done by Brad Schoenfield. So Brad has been known in the exercise physiology world for a long time, specifically in the world of hypertrophy and muscle building. And he did the study in 2015 that took a look at 24 resistance trained males. So these are guys that have already been training, so we're not going to deal with any kind of newbie gains or anything like that. Okay, and what he did is he divided them into two groups. One group trained in like an 8 to 12 repetition range, like just a lower rep range, and another group trained in a very high repetition range, like 25 to 35 reps. Okay, they did this three times per week for a total of eight weeks. Nutrition was the same, protein intake was the same, they had all these things controlled. What they found at the end of the eight weeks was that there was not a huge change between overall muscle thickness with each group. Now, the low rep group did have a little bit more in the way of muscle thickness develop, but not as much as we would have thought. We were talking like within a couple percent. So that's pretty wild. So once you already have a baseline foundation of training, high reps really work pretty darn well too. And I guess it all depends on how much of a hypoxic environment you're creating. How hard are you straining with those high reps? What's interesting is that they did find that the high rep group developed much more muscle endurance. Well, that's kind of a given. You're working at a higher rep, more endurance based. Okay, so what we have to look at is how we find the balance but we also have to really define balance. And I'll get to that in just a second. Okay, it's a little bit abstract way of looking at this, but okay, the reality is, is that if you were to train with heavy, heavy weight all the time, two reps, three reps, four reps, it's mentally draining and physically draining. You cannot physically do that much. You cannot mentally do it that much. You just get exhausted, okay? Now, obviously, when you're lifting heavy, you have more tension on the muscles, so you have a lot more mechanical stress, but you don't really have enough metabolic stress. Now, on the contrary, if you go just high reps all the time, then you have a lot of metabolic stress, but you don't have the nervous system adaptation uh, of going heavy. You don't have the mechanical stress. You don't put the muscle under the load that it requires to adapt to a heavier weight. So what ends up happening is people come up with a balance theory and they say, okay, well, the happy medium is going to be like six, eight reps because it's halfway between lifting super heavy and fatiguing and lifting way too light and not getting enough load. So they're like, let's just find the happy medium, find the balance. Guys, I've talked about in videos before, there's no such thing as balance, okay? So this is like flipping everything on its head. Like nothing good in life ever came from just a happy balanced medium out of anything. We always have to push it to extremes in one way or the other to find balance in the aggregate. And what I mean by that is, what does our balance look like long term? So by making our rep range six to eight, six to 10 reps in the now, we're trying to find a happy medium right then and there. When in reality, 
we could find our happy medium by having days where we lift really heavy and days where we lift really light or weeks where we go heavy and weeks where we go light. Then when you back up and you look back to scale, you realize you're still achieving that same balance. You're just not trying to achieve it in the moment. So by training in that six to eight repetition range, the theory was that we'd still be lifting heavy enough to elicit a sort of a, a mechanical response, but we'd be lifting light enough to trigger a metabolic response that allows us to still train with a higher volume. So it's a little bit interesting and I'll dive into it a little bit more. So what I really would recommend you do is take your workouts and organize them in such a way where you have small intervals of lifting heavy. Okay, and that is your focus and compartmentalize that focus. So you go into the gym and you lift in that two, three, four, five repetition range and you have plenty of rest and you focus on that and you go through a phase of that for a week or so, maybe two weeks. Okay, you still keep your cardio in the mix, but you keep it separate. Okay, you separate your cardio from your weight training. This way, you're purely weight training, purely for the mechanical and central nervous system response, okay? So you're trying to get that strength, you're trying to acquire that strength, so that when you do go to your lighter reps the next week or the you know, next month, you're able to do said higher reps with heavier weight because you've adapted. Okay, so to put it into a simple equation, if you walk into the gym and you have a bench press of 315 pounds and you go ahead and that's your two repetition max and you keep working at that. Then when you go to your higher repetition workouts, you might be able to do you know, 185 pounds for 15 reps, okay? But if you allow yourself to get stronger with your heavy phases, you might be able to push that up to 325 or maybe 350 for two reps, which consequently allows you to do that same 15, 25, 35 reps, but with a slightly heavier weight. So maybe with 200 pounds instead of 185. So then and only then can you kind of have a leapfrog approach. You go heavy, high rep, heavy, high rep, heavy, and you're balancing it all out over time in the aggregate, not just trying to find a happy medium all the time. It's a difference of kind of like a stagnant kind of slow growth like this versus sort of a step ladder that's just going to get you there higher. Okay, so you still want to focus on intensity and having the same intensity. You're just focusing on intensity in different areas, right? So 80 to 90% max intensity when you're going heavy, 80 to 90% maximum intensity when you're going light. Okay, intensity is just relative to whatever you're doing at that point in time. And this really makes a big difference. I would actually argue that the lighter rep side of things is actually a more powerful way to go. You see, by going with the lighter reps, you actually develop mitochondrial efficiency and mitochondrial strength. Okay, if we can increase the mitochondrial strength and we can increase the number of mitochondria, we're actually increasing the number of sites at which ATP is created. So this goes along with my theory that cardio is never your enemy. Cardio always helps you develop more ATP and more mitochondria, which therefore fuels your workouts. Okay, so if you're going higher reps, you're actually developing more cellular strength and metabolic stress. So heavy weight training just to give yourself the stimulus and then go light. So there's no delicate balance. I'm not saying that I'm anti 6, 10, 12 rep range. I mean, it has its place, but the reality is that if you go to each extreme, you naturally find balance. So there's a study that was actually published in the Journal of Physiology that took a look at time under tension. Okay, I wanted to take a look at how long a muscle was under load and the effect that, that would have on overall recovery and protein synthesis. So they took a look at an eccentric contraction that took six seconds, so basically six seconds on the way down versus one second, so kind of a standard rep. So standard rep versus slow eccentric contraction, right? Okay, here's what they found. They found that both mitochondrial and sarcoplasmic protein synthesis elevated significantly more in the six second group. Okay, so they weren't even lifting as heavy. They were focusing on that negative eccentric rep, which goes to show that protein synthesis, when it comes down to building muscle and actually getting the muscle we want, protein synthesis is regulated more so by the metabolic stress than the actual mechanical stress. So the mechanical stress is just a catalyst to allow you to do more weight to elicit a stronger metabolic result. So it's short step ladder, of mechanical stress, longer step ladder of just the lighter metabolic stress. The metabolic stress is what's gonna trigger the protein synthesis that's gonna allow you to build muscle. Flip a switch, that's all you're doing. You're turning the body's protein synthesis system on and you're gonna get more of that system turning on 
by putting your body under metabolic load versus mechanical load. Not to mention, you're gonna be able to go for a longer period of time without burning out your joints. So I can go into more detail on this if you want, but I wanted to save it and make it just kind of a simple concrete video so that you had a new way of looking at your training rather than just trying to go balls to the wall at the six to eight rep range every single day, day in and day out. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my videos. And if you have an idea for a future one, just put it down in the comment section. See you soon.